No peeking. All right, you can look now. An Ampeg M12, don't see these every day. Um, early 60s, uh, similar to tweed, brown face sort of design, I think. And um, the customer says, raspy distortion, check the capacitors, oscillation when turn on, more after something, input buzz when not plugged in. All right, let's have a look. <laughs> Before we um, start pulling it apart, let's just have a closer look at it. it. Looks like we've got a bit of staining on the otherwise beautiful grill cloth. I love that Ampeg checkered um, vinyl. The logo's in good condition. We'll just flip this around. Yeah, the panel has its, you know, bit of oxidation on there, which is very common for this era. Now, chassis definitely looks a little bit flimsier than the equivalent fender. You'll see there's no sides on the chassis at all. Well, that's a bit sad. Um, all of those capacitors, pretty much all of them, that's the only original one I can see in here, um, have been replaced. But if they all were that red Astron, then Whoever worked on it in the past probably did the right thing. He used um, brown polypropylene caps and the yellow Malaroy Viché type, which look a lot better than the horrid um, orange drops. Okay, we've got that cap can. We'll have to check to see how that's going. 5Y3. And that looks like, yeah, Philco made in the USA, nice. And these look like a couple of GE Jan 6V6s, nice, a good tube set. And here we have the um, 6S L7 tube, Sylvania, very nice. And if we haven't got the original speaker, we've still got a beautiful replacement it's the Weber. Oh, I'm not sure if you can see that. It's a C12Q. So this is actually a pretty early Weber. Um, I got one of these in, uh, what have I got in? I think I've got it doing duty in my Marshall 18 water. These speakers sound fantastic. So good choice. All right. Okay, we can see this is a USA amp, so we need to plug it into our 240 to 110 step down. And then we're gonna just see what sort of noises it makes. I have my step down transformer plugged into my Variac. So this will go up to 240, and my step down will do the job of going to uh, 110. Little pilot lights on. We're at 100 volts, pre-step down. So it's probably gonna be something like about 60 volts or something. One twenty. So that'll be about 55 volts. The amp seeing. Hundred and eighty volts. Okay, things are coming to life now. Okay, I'm hearing a pulsing. I suspect that means our vibrato is on. We're hearing a bit of hum. Oh, and sure enough, something is oscillating. 
Okay, we've got a few things there to look at. So that hum is making me think we're going to check the capacitors. In particular, we'll check the health of this cap can. I do have replacements, but um, I'll measure that first. And we'll also check the health of the um, 6v6s, 5y3. Uh, make sure all of our voltages are looking okay. So I have turned this down instead of being at 240 It's at 230 volts coming into it. So it would be down a little bit on the voltage side I might pull the chassis out just make it easier to work on output transformer Is what's that nine two six Eight five two. So it's a fifty-second week of um, I'd be thinking nineteen fifty-eight and nine two six. It looks like it's a company called Todd Electric. Now this transformer just looks way newer. Who made this one? There we go. What's that say? 926. Ah, same manufacturer. 902. So I'm going to guess and say that's 1959. Uh, second week. Now I just noticed this multi cap can. I thought, oh, this is potentially a bit of a problem. But some nice person in the past. No, not too recent, in the recent past has replaced it with uh, a CE distribution. CE distribution now own all of the equipment that used to make these things back in the day. And that I believe is telling me it's 2017. So we're going to measure the ASR on it anyway. But um, I am much relieved to see this new CE manufacturing multi cap can. I reckon it'll be fine. Now we want to see somewhere between 15 and 35 of plate current. And tube one is looking pretty good right now. This is unusual. We don't normally see this ramping effect. I'm thinking this tube is not looking healthy. All right, I'm going to also check them because uh, I can't check the other uh, tubes on my Maxi Matcher, so I have to check them on my BNK. So 6V6. Here we go. So obviously it's 6 volts, which I've set there. The first number is the voltage on the filaments, like 6L6, 6V6, they're all 6 volts. 12AX7 is 12 volts. Uh, socket 29, which is this one here. And sensitivity is 79. And we'll just let that tube heat up a bit. Now this is going to give me a percentage value. So this does all of its tests and just gives me a replace, you know, sus and um, good and also as a percentage. So we'll just let the heat up for a moment. Okay, it'll test for shorts. That would come on if there was. Grid emissions would be on that top scale. That looks good. And test one, that looks around about 70. So we're going to call that 70. And that was the one that tested okay. This one I thought was a bit odd, the way it kept increasing. So let's see if the BNK brings up anything different. So I'm just going to put down the 70 there for my BNK reading, which is a pass. Not bad for a tube, which is God knows how old. Shorts, good. Grid emissions, 
good. Test one. It looks pretty solid to me. Okay, this is where there's a little life test button here and we can see it's gone. So I'm thinking the Maxi Matcher found something odd. This is finding something odd. Now to test the um, 6SL7s. 6S L 6SL7. So 6 volts again because it's a 6. Uh, socket 25 this time. It's going to go in there. And it's got two triodes. So we're going to set this to 85. And then we're going to test each uh, triad separately. And you'll see here it says the tube is good if it reads 22 or more, which it normally would put it down in this replace section. But they've scaled it in this way. All right, let's put our first one in. And we've got that set to 85. And we want to plug into 25. That should do it. Oh, that's ah, not going to look so good. All right, I found a 6SL7 in my NOS stash. Got him in here heating up and um, fingers crossed that this is all okay. That should be warm enough. Shorts, yes. Got no reading here, no flicker there. Grid emissions, good. Excellent. 30. 32. I'm liking that. This is now going into the Ampeg. Right, this sadly is not. So I'll return it to the customer and um, you can put it in his display cabinet. All right, here's our power supply. We're going to check this out next. So we've got a 5Y3 and it's coming up here. We've got a 1K dropping resistor here. We've got a 22K dropping resistor here. These are no doubt all in that multi-cap can, which we're going to check now. And we're going to check it for equivalent series resistance. A capacitor in an ideal world is just going to be like this. But as we know, it's not an ideal world. So there's going to be an equivalent series resistance in series, obviously. There's also going to be at high frequencies, well above audio, there's going to be also an equivalent series inductance. But we won't have to worry about that as, at audio. And there's also going to be a parallel resistance. And that's basically when we're looking at leakage. That's what we're going to be looking at for leakage. And this is what we're looking at for filter capacitors more. Now, why is it a bad thing? Capacitors don't like heat. Resistors create heat. They also create a path around it. But we're more worried about the heat that's created. And as that equivalent series resistance increases with ages, so will be the heat generated internally, which will then accelerate its uh, demise. So um, that's a good indicator of the life left of a uh, capacitor. So I've measured all of these wax capacitors. Mm, they're out by like 100%. 50 to 100 percent those four but after the wholesale swapping out of everything here i can't really bring myself to change them like i'm going to try it if they work if if it sounds good and if it's not a cause of a problem I, i'm going to leave them you know i just want to keep what original things there are in this amp as much as possible 
it's hard to know where to start and, and how much work to do on an amplifier. You know, there's a certain amount of professional pride. Um, see this just burned insulation here. I mean, he's used, whoever did this before, he or she, has used good quality parts. Like, I mean, that's good. That's not cheap here. Uh, but really crappy soldering. Um, not too enthused about the earth point. Um, I'm going to have to do that again. The very least, I'm going to... Um, uh, get my Dremel tool on there and, and make sure we've got a good earth connection there. But, yeah, I looked at how he's done his um, power connection. I'm happy with that. So when he put his um, three wire in, there's our earth lead there. We've got brown is active in Australia. So brown goes to the fuse the far side of the fuse, then it gets picked up by there, goes to the power switch, which is correct. The other side of the switch will go into the power transformer. So he's done that correct. As I said, he's done everything right and used good components. Just the quality isn't that good, but it's hard to know where to start and stop. I mean, the next person who looks at this will go, oh shit, Chris isn't very good. But then I don't know that the customer would approve of me adding a big bill um, to remedy this this amp, all the little little chores that need doing. So what else I found here? There's no earthing leaves other than this one on the um, jacks. So this is probably one reason why we're getting a bit of noise coming through here. And even that, I'm not 100% sure that that's making contact. I don't think it is. So I'll tidy that up, but none of the others have got earthing connectors anyway. Where do you start? Where do you stop? Anyway, my next job is I'm going to clean these, make that right. I'm going to clean all the pots. I'm going to service all of the sockets. I'll put the tubes back. Then I'm going to bring the power up and we'll see if that problem has been resolved by um, replacing that tube. All right, I've powered it up and we can hear that we've got some pretty unpleasant um, harm happening here. Everything is just carrying on. But look at this. I've plugged into uh, one of the two channels. I'm not sure which one. But look at this. So this must be channel two. Dead quiet. Dead quiet. Clearly my attempt at saving this jack didn't work. Let's try the other channel. Let's now silence this one. We'll plug into this one. Look at that. Perfectly acceptable. I'll try it on the other channel. Perfectly quiet. So clearly what, quiet Mr. Telly, clearly what needs to happen is we need to put earthing uh, jacks, shorting jacks, on each of these four. It's going to be changing it away from 
uh, its design because it was in fact designed to have only one earthing socket and the rest are open, which means it's going to be just havoc, creating havoc of noise. And look, once we've earthed it, Now this is the jack that I'm going to replace, the socket that I'm going to replace with a new switching one with lots of good tension here. I've tried retensioning this and um, cleaning the contact but there's just not enough spring left into that no matter how much I bend it, it just ain't going to make contact. All right. Let's pull this out. Man, such clumsy workmanship here in the past. The only thing I don't like about it, of course, is people can say, ah, oh, shit, that's Chris that did such a bad job. Well, what do you do? Do you rewire the whole thing? Or do you go... Well, hopefully they can tell it's not me. All right. So I pulled the old one out. Yeah, there's just no spring left in that earthing connection. So it's gone. Let's hope that that's cured that buzz. Let's plug in a guitar. Channel one, quiet. Channel two, quiet. We're liking this. In which case, we've got acceptable levels of noise. Next thing I want to do is I want to check what's going on with the uh, biasing. Um, these are obviously, it's obviously not the original um, cathode bias resistor here. Someone's replaced the bypass cap and put in these two resistors in parallel. They, that is a 1.2K, so assuming that's a 1.2K as well. The schematic is just impossible to read. Could that be 680? Poof! It's possible, but I think what we'll do is we'll um, measure what our current going through that resistor is. We know it's not going to be an accurate um, representation of the current flowing through the two tubes because they are so far out, yeah, about 50% out. Okay, and I'm just going to measure directly across this cathode while trying not to get myself zapped by that fuse. And we've got 31.25 volts. Better write that down. Thirty-one point two five. Now we need to measure the cathode to plate voltage. It's not plate to ground when it's cathode bypassed. So we know that one's going to our cathode. And plate pin three, one, two, three. 367 volts. Now, I need to, to shut this down, discharge those capacitors. Because I want to measure that resistance accurately. I don't want to just say it's 600 ohms to 1.2s in parallel. Please people, just be careful of who you use to, to work on your amp, won't you? Okay, discharging the plate voltage from the capacitors. 
using my little patented discharging tool. Not much of a patent to it. Fuse there for when idiot brain forgets to turn off the power before discharging the caps. I have burned out several 100 ohm resistors. But since I put this in, I've never forgotten. So there you go. We'll expect to see something around 600. It's actually pretty darn close. 606. Right, let me just show you this little bit of arithmetics that we will do here. Why do mathematicians talk with a French accent? I do not know. Here's my Aldi calculator. Okay, so we've got cathode voltage of 31.25. We've got um, our resistor of 606 ohms. 31.25 divided by 606. That's 51 point, uh, we'll call it 6 milliamps. Whoa, that's high for a 6v6. <gasps> but wait, no. We've got the current of two tubes going through there. So let's divide that by two. As we know, it's not going to be accurate because those tubes are so far out in uh, matchingness but the average current between them, and that's what we're going to work on because I want to keep those tubes, is 25.8 milliamps. Now, let's do 25 point. So we're now going to figure out the power dissipation of each tube, averaged. So the I. So the voltage across it is 367. And the current is uh, 0.0258 um, milliamps. So let's multiply this by 367. And that's 9.46 watts. A, um, a uh, 6v6 tube is a 12 watt tube. So let's divide that by 12, and this will give us our power dissipation as a percentage. Let's divide that by 12, and that's 78%. Okay, I've come up with a value that I'm quite happy with. I've used my little patch cables to try a few different resistors, like in a 750 ohm. Now it's going to increase the difference between the cathode and the control grid, uh, which is going to make the tube turn off a little bit more, which is going to help it run a little bit cooler. How much cooler? Remember it was running at, uh, what did we say, 78% before? Eh, it's probably a bit hot. I'd like 70 at the top end. So um, let's do the calcs on this one. These are the values. So we got a cathode voltage of 32.9 volts, and that's across our resistor, which is 750 ohms. There's my Aldi calculator. Uh, 32.9 divided by 750 equals 43.9 milliamps for both tubes. Divide that by two, it's going to give us 21.9 milliamps on average per tube. Now the, um, I measured the voltage between the plate and the cathode, and it was 374 volts. So the dissipation, the power dissipation is 374. The 
by 0.0219 by 374. Uh, it's 8.2 watts. Let's divide that by 12. It's uh, 8.2, divide that by 12. Uh, 8.2 divided by 12, 68%. I'm happy with that. It was running at 78, we've cooled it down to 68. That's good. Only problem is I've only got, <clears throat> I think that's a three watt resistor. Is that enough? Um, let's see, so we've got the uh, cathode voltage across that resistor is 32.9. So the power across that is V squared over R, which was uh, 750. So 32.9. 30, squared, that's my dog, uh, divided by 750. So it's 1.4 watts. So it's not going to burn out just at this testing level. But we're not going to leave it at that. I mean, when these tubes are fully pumping, oh, it's getting a bit more demanding now, my dog that is. We could be seeing, you know, considerably more current going through that plate, uh, sorry, through that cathode resistor. Um, yeah. Let's say we're seeing, yeah, let's say 50 milliamps. So we've got I squared, oh, sorry, uh, 50 milliamps by two. So we're seeing a potential of 100 milliamps squared times R. So that's 0.1 squared, because that's 100 milliamps is 0.1 of an amp, times 750 is 7.5 watts. So I'm going to order a um, 750 ohm resistor at 10 watts. Is that an overkill? Maybe, 5 watt will probably do it, but hey, we're talking sense to protect the amplifier, so that's what we're going to do. Don't have one in stock, I'll have to order one or go buy the electronic shop, which is just too far away to justify the time. Okay, I'll be back. I was just checking the fuse on this. Good thing, it's supposed to be 2 amp, it's 3 amp at 110 volts. So, but I had a hell of a time getting the fuse out. Why? Because the fuse holder was mangled internally. So I got it out, but can't get it back in again. So I'm going to have to replace the fuse holder as well. And if I look in my little fuse holder collection, Fortunately, I have exactly the same one, so it'll look like an Ampeg original. Let's get started on this. Done. Now put in the correct value of 2 amps. And this new fuse holder should last hopefully another 60 years. Beautiful. Looks like I bought one. So the chassis is... Um not the strongest made chassis I've ever seen, but it's got a beautiful chrome finish to it, and it just seems a, seems a shame to return it with all this gunge all over it. So I clean off most of that with WD-40. And then I wipe that down with um, a, a spirit, white spirit, I'm not sure what you call it in America, we call it shellite here, it's like lighter fluid. Uh, you've got to be careful with the lettering. There's white lettering on the chrome. And then give the chrome work a bit of a polish with this. Comes up looking a treat. 
took all the knobs off and gave it a bit of a clean. Uh, and the sink, this just with a bit of dishwashing liquid. Great. Don't want them too clean and too fake. Just want to get off the grime. Okay, it's done. Well, sort of. I'm still going to wait for that 750 ohm 10 watt resistor to arrive and I'll solder that. And meanwhile, it's just got those other two 1.5s paralleled to give me the 750. Uh, I've just temporarily clipped the Weber speaker because that's just a delicious speaker. And um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a sound sample of what it's like. It's going to sound the same once I put it back together, but um, I'm just going to leave it like this until that resistor arrives. If I've got a chance, if I can activate my brain cells, I'm going to take a photo of the finished product and put it on this video. If not, you'll know, poor Chris, no memory cells.